Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, this is a blue shirt, these are some flowers, these are other flowers, and this is how to make things black and white and one other color in After Effects. Let's go there, now my shirt is red. Alright, so inside of After Effects you're going to want to import your footage, and now I know I showed you flowers, but instead I'm going to use some footage of a big red wall just because that's slightly easier to demonstrate things on. So, you bring in your footage, drag it onto the new composition button, make a new composition. What you've got in front of you is a whole bunch of color information that the computer is displaying in pixels. So your camera has lovingly captured all of this, but you only want to use black, white, and one color. That's kind of rude of you, but that's fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to be copy this layer. So we have two of them, so control D or command D to duplicate. Now we're going to use one of them for the black and white information, and we're going to use one of them for the color information. I spell color this way because I'm from Canada. On the black and white one, all we're going to do is we're going to apply a tint effect to it, which strips out all the color information and a curves to it as well. You could use the uh, black and white effect as well if you're familiar with using that, but uh, for our purposes this is too much to explain for this tutorial, so I'm just gonna go with the first two. So use the tint and curves to kind of set the uh, light and dark balance that you want to see here. Um, I don't really care too much, so that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna turn on the eyeball of the color layer. What we're doing here is we're going to use some of the color correction tools to really only bring out the red of that wall. So we're going to use color, I'm just going to type that in, and there's a lot of color options to choose from here, but the one we want is leave color. And you can th probably surmise by the name that this will leave one of the colors behind. And I suppose, you know, you've probably deduced that this is basically the only effect you need if everything is shot perfectly. Unfortunately, as is the case with most things, this is not. So we're going to select the largest batch of color that we want to remove, and that is the red. And usually you want to take, if you have a range of colors, you want to take the mid-tone in between them. So I want to use this red and this red, but as you can see they're kind of far apart. So let's just zoom in here and let's select a pixel that's, that's in the middle. So we select both of them. Hooray, hooray. Nothing's happened yet because we still have to decolor it. A hundred percent! All gone. So there you go. Now, as you can see, it's not quite working out. So we've got some green that's showing up. We've got some purple in here as well. That's because those are, on the RGB scale, close to the red we selected within 15%. So that basically means if we click on the value up here, you can see that it's RGB value is, you know, whatever, 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 and the tolerance is saying 15% away from each of these values are still cool to leave on. I don't totally agree with that, but that's, that's fine. But we can change the way this operates by saying don't use the RGB values, use the hue values. So if we do that, now when we look at this, it's only using things that are going to be 15% away from three on the hue dial. So that's pretty good. And as you can see, it's had just terrific effects on the overall image. If you're having problems being more precise, click it to hue. If you don't really care, use RGB. And sometimes these things balance out. It really depends on the image. So if it's not working out with one, try the other. Now we're going to tweak it down. So we take the tolerance here and make it less tolerant. I'm a pretty intolerant person, so you really only need to have it as tolerant as it takes to get all the color you want. Let's see, one, two, three, four? Close to four. So four seems to be about doing it. Oh, still missing a bit in the corner over there. What I'm doing is I'm poking the up arrow on the keyboard with this value selected, so it helps me go through that uh, nicely. Let's see, how are things looking on here? Mm, we have some spilling into this, so let's take the tolerance down a bit and put up the edge softness a little. Maybe that'll help smooth things out for us. Really it's a lot of fine tweaks and as you can see it's kinda looking alright as it is. So the other thing you're gonna need to do is scrub through the video and sometimes your lighting conditions change which as you can see here some of the red of the wall is being bounced onto the white of this column 
and it is causing it to unfortunately have some red on it. There you go, now you've got a red wall isolated and then you can change your uh, black and white values on the black and white layer. Now someone's probably going to ask me, and I've already anticipated this, that how did you change your shirt from blue to red? Well, I went ahead and I uh, took out a hue and saturation and plonked that right on here. Now we've got things like uh, you can change the saturation of that wall to make it, you know, a brighter red. This will only affect the colors that you've left, so that's pretty great. You can also change the lightness up and down, so this is how you can uh, hue shift things to be totally different colors. But we're not quite done yet. This was simple because it was a red wall and quite frankly there were not a lot of other similar colors in the thing. So we have red, purple is close, but on the color wheel it's pretty easy to, to cut those apart. Green and red are natural opposites. This has almost no color value, so this was a simple one. If we look at something like the yellow flower example, the bottom layer is still just the tint and curves, so forget about that. The top layer, however, we have a bit more trouble in there um, just because we have green. Now, I have a mask on there because in some instances you're going to want to save yourself the work by masking out only the sections you need to discolor. And then you just draw a mask around that using the rectangular pen tool or whatever. And then when you do leave color, even you can see here the yellow and the green are too close together. So what I've done is I've used the change to color, which is in effect over here. So change to color, there it is. And I'm changing it from the green, so you just select the green, and I'm changing it to a 50% gray, meaning it's going to have no color value at all. And what that'll do is it'll just wash all of that out. And again, you have to tweak the tolerances to get it into the right spot. And you want to make sure you're changing the hue, saturation, and lightness of all that stuff. Because if you just change the hue, it looks funny. So basically, you take the colors that are showing up that you don't want, and you're changing them down to gray. So that's one method to do it. Or you could use the color, color key. You can pull out the color key here. And what we're going to do is we're going to select those greens. Select, want to select some greens? I'll select one. Select this green. And then uh, basically we just make that green disappear. Put that above the leave color. And then uh, you can just carve it out as you need. So that's another one of those things where you're going to need to tweak the tolerances to uh, get it just right. But uh, at the end of the day, you can carve out color using the color key. And those are the essential tools that you'll need in order to uh, make this work. So starting at the top of the stack, you've got leave color, which is going to be choosing that color and isolating it. And then you're going to have the color key for making colors go away and then you've got the change to color. If the color key doesn't work, then you use the change to color. And then at the end, hue and saturation to tweak that color to make it fit a little bit more naturally. Because really, this seems really glaring and uh, like it's just uh, it's too much yellow, you know? It's just weird. But uh, then you can use this to tweak it up and get it just right. So I'm Evan Abrams. Hopefully this has helped you to isolate one color in your images. So now you can uh, fake Schindler's List if you want. Um, I don't know why you would. Any parody of that is just considered in horrendous taste. Uh, as well, you could do a Yellow Pages ad. So that could be pretty cool. So if you like this, comment, rate, subscribe. A uh, new tutorial comes up every week. Uh, thanks for checking out the channel, and I hope you enjoyed this. I'm Evan Abrams, teaching you how to use After Effects right here on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next week.